The sci-fi drama The Peripheral on Prime Video centers on the life of Flynn Fisher, a young woman. When she participates in a game as a beta tester, her life is forever changed, but she soon realizes that there is much more at risk than just winning or losing. She becomes involved in something that has a significant effect. Her present choices could have disastrous knock-on implications that would change and potentially jeopardize the future. The first episode takes place in 2099, and the skyline of London is dominated by massive towering statues. An anxious man is sitting on a park bench. He is shortly approached by a young girl who comes over to him in her bare feet. She talks about rescuing the world and speaks with a knowledge that belies her youth. It's a captivating beginning that astute viewers will do well to keep in mind. In the year 2032, in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Flynn Fisher is caring for her blind mother in a sizable rural home. She keeps tabs on Burton, who lives in an airstream, and makes a career playing immersive VR games. Flynn goes to give Burton a firm reprimand after becoming concerned that he has been stealing his mother's medication. However, Burton manages to persuade Flynn to participate in his game so that he can afford to buy more medication. Flynn excitedly engages in the VR experience because he's a badass pro at these specific games. The gameplay is superbly executed, feeling new and visually distinctive. Naturally, Flynn gives Burton some money, and she uses the cash machine to get her money. As Flynn commutes by bike to work, director Vincenzo Natali creates a plausible and well-thought-out future. These subtly hinted at future events are great for creating new worlds. Flynn works at a 3D printing facility where she chats up her best buddy Billy Ann. They talk about Flynn's obsession with the soon-to-be-married police officer Tommy and his failed endeavors. Although she is clearly capable of much more in life, she chooses to live modestly rather than splurging in Burton's fantastical worlds. Flynn receives a futuristic headset from an evasive Colombian company that very same morning. For a sizable fee, Burton has been invited to test out this cutting-edge technology. They are convinced he is the best candidate because of his VR gaming prowess. Of course, they really wanted Flynn's services, so Burton invites her to use the kit in his place while he tests it out. She initially hesitates, but eventually agrees while battling to control her excitement. Flynn travels to London in 2099 in the game, as seen in the opening scene with those intimidating historical statues. Flynn is Burton's avatar and is shown riding a motorcycle around the streets of the metropolis. Burton is directed by a narrator to Buckingham Palace for a posh party. He must first seduce a strange woman before kidnapping her. The series's cinematic elements are hinted at in the suspenseful scene that follows, in which Burton battles a robot with a knife. Burton eventually gets to meet the woman who had been ordering his avatar all along. Charlotte portrays her as Alita. Flynn relates the experience to a somewhat envious Burton when he returns to reality. Flynn gushes about the incredibly realistic gameplay and claims that she can feel everything, including pain, in the game. She travels into town that evening to get her mother's medication. Connor, a drunk triple amputee with nothing to lose, acts bravely to help her when she has a run-in with some rude gangster types in this situation. He aids her in completing the targeted transaction while simultaneously alienating the goons. The following day, Flynn learns from her mother that Burton was actually giving her his extra painkillers rather than taking them away from her, and she quickly expresses her regret. Then Flynn returns to the game for a completely new experience. As Burton, she discovers herself on a surgery table. Mariel, the victim of her kidnapping, was required for this crucial procedure. Burton's eye is swapped out for Mariel's. Flynn experiences everything during this agonizing and graphic procedure, yet she is able to keep her heart rate under control to deal with the agony. This sci-fi thriller has a horrifying body horror episode tossed in that compares the show to Black Mirror. Alita and Burton then drive to a hidden area and enter the building using Mariel's eye. They descend 95 floors in an elevator to reach a strange building. Here, Burton scans the retina of his own eye. Despite the fact that they are stopped in mid-flow by an intrusion, this one is just as traumatic. When Alita commands him to fight, he is immediately captured while the unidentified foe advances on her. Burton escapes from his restraints somehow, exposing a robotic arm hidden behind his prosthetic skin. The murderer explicitly implies that this game has real-world repercussions when he asks Burton for his real name and address. Then a sonic weapon kills Burton, and Flynn awakens in her true world. Flynn throws up and vows never to play the game once more. The business that paid for her services, Milagrous Coldiron, contacts her while she is at work the following day. 
The person on the other end of the phone is Wilf from the opening scene, and he alerts her to her impending danger. Wilf thinks Flynn and her family are the intended victims of a bounty that has been posted on the dark web. When she gets there, Burton and his pals are hosting a little party. Though Burton's pals send a precautionary drone out to investigate the situation just in case, he laughs off her story. A group of assailants moving toward the house are spotted by the drone, 